This is a simple expansion board that I built for the Arduino Nano. Right now it's programmed to do only this. If I press this switch, the LED on digital pin 9, which I label LED1, comes on. Press the red switch, digital pin 10, which I label as LED2, comes on. And then there's a third LED that's connected to digital pin 11. And as what this is does, it reads the potentiometer and only between from 401 to 799, as far as the pot goes, remember a analog read is a 10-bit value 0 through 1023 on an Arduino, only from 401 to 799, as you turn through the range, does LED3 come on. Alright, here is the schematic for the connections to my Arduino Nano. I have switches S1, S2 connected to digital pin 2 and digital pin 3 respectively. And digital pins 9, 10, and 11, all three have LEDs connected to them labeled LED 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Here's another view of the board that you saw in the small clip preceding this. Arduino Nano, LED 1, LED 2, LED 3, and S1, S2, and here's the pot potentiometer. Here, connected to 5 volts on one side, ground on the other, it's connected to ADC0. If you notice the jumper from the pot, it goes over here to ADC0. Here we'll be using uh, several if statements to illustrate comparison operators, such as equal to, not equal to, and so forth. I'll also be using Boolean operators. I'll illustrate how those work. For the record, true and false are defined in the Arduino compiler. True is anything not zero. False equals zero. So even if you use the word true, the compiler will interpret that as true or a one, or false will be interpreted as a zero. Or for true, I can use any number that is not zero. I have defined the word on as a binary 1, and I have defined the word off as a binary 0, which is a 1 is the same thing as a high as far as the compiler is concerned, a low is the same thing as a 0. To keep from having to endlessly write digital read and going through all this rigmarole time after time, I wrote two little routines called S1 and S2. Very simply, when I press the switch S1, the routine will return a binary 1. If it isn't pressed, it returns a 0. The same thing with switch S2. Finally, I have this little routine called, very simply, POT. It reads the analog value from 0 to 1023, from analog digital converter zero where I connect it to potentiometer. Let's look at the following if statements. Remember, a binary one is the same thing as a high, same thing as the word on that I defined earlier. A binary zero is the same thing as a low, which I also defined as off earlier on. Let's look at our first if statement here. LED1 will turn on when S1 is high. I press S1, it returns a 1 or a high. That, of course, is equal to a high. 
Thus, LED1 is going to be high or on or turned on. If I don't press the switch, it returns a zero or false, which of course is not equivalent to a high, thus the LED will be off. S2, the second statement, I changed slightly. S2 does the same thing as S1. If a switch is pressed, it returns a high. But this time, I want it to be not equal to a high. In this case, as long as pressed, S2 is not pressed, the LED2 will remain on. When I press S2, it will return a 1, which is not equal to a, um, which will actually turn it off. Won't meet the condition. And thus again, the way this one is written, press a switch, LED comes on. Change this one character. When you press a switch, the LED goes off. Let's use the function or subroutine pot to read a value from the potentiometer from 0 through 1023, depending on the position of the control. I'm going to call pot. It's going to return a value from 0 through 1023. I'm going to check to see if that numeric value is less than or equal to 400. If it comes back, say, 300, then the condition is going to be true. LED1 is going to turn on. But if I go beyond, but if I go to 401 above, LED1 is going to turn off. Let's go to the next if statement. I'm using pot again, but this time I'm checking to see if the value returned is greater than or equal to 800. If it is, 800 or greater, the condition becomes true, LED turns on, below 800 it'll come back false, and LED2 is off. So we can check the range of a pot to cut on the appropriate LED. What if the value return, while this might be a pot, what if it was a centigrade temperature sensor that returned a value, you would use the same setup. Uh, maybe if it got beyond, let's look at this one. What if this returned a value of, let's just argue, 800 degrees from a center, from a temperature sensor, just for the number 800, you might want to switch on a cooling fan. But of course, if the temperature was below 800, you would want the cooling fan turned off to save power. Think of it that way. Before, I could turn on an LED if the value was 800 or greater. Or I could turn on LED2 if the value was 400 or less. But what about from 401 to 799? I would have to employ a logical AND statement. First, I'm going to have to check to see if the pot value is greater than 400. If it is, this will be true. At the same time, I have to check to make sure the pot value is less than 800. Both of these have to be true for the entire if statement to be true and turn on LED3. So it only works as a true from 401 to 799. That's what you saw when I adjusted the pot in the video. Part of the way through, the LED3 was off. In the middle, the LED3 turned on. And towards the end, as I adjusted the pot, the LED turned off. Now I've taken that if statement and I had two conditions that had to be met. Now I had added a third condition. I have to, it, the, the pot has to be greater than 400. The pot has to be less than 800. And now S1 has to be high. 
That is, I can adjust the pot all day long through the whole range and the LED will never light up. It will only light up when simultaneously I press the switch S1 and return a high. So you'll have a true and a true and a true. And you can check multiple parameters doing this. Notice something before we move on. You notice I have each of these small statements within their own individual curve parentheses or curve brackets, whatever you want to call them, in all cases. This is a good programming practice that it helps keep things in order. It may work fine without it, but I'll demonstrate shortly why these are important and why you should use these parentheses because a lot of people come back, well, this didn't program up right and, or compile correctly. It may compile just fine and just not work. And I will illustrate why you can get into these problems. All right, let's look at this statement, how I changed it this time. If S1, that is I push the switch, is high, and S2 is high, that is I push both switches at the same time, LED, what this means is either switch, if I press either switch, either S1 or S2, LED3 will come on. Because the truth table for a logical OR is true or true. Either one of them has to be true. So either switch that I press with this, with this particular strip of code will turn LED3 on. If I change it back to an AND, I have to press both switches simultaneously to turn LED3 on because we're right back to up here. A true and a true will give you true. So I have to press this switch and I have to press this switch. All right. What if I did this condition? By changing this condition, I have to press switch 1, and I have to leave not press switch 2. If I press both together, well, this is an AND statement. This one will not be true. If I press this switch, both have to be true. All right. Now I've went back to three parameters again, but this time I have an AND mixed in with an OR. What is it I want to do here? Okay, if the pot is greater than 500, well, that alone is going to make it true. Is, is that what you want to do? Or do you want both of, or do you want, say... S2 to be pressed and pot to be greater than 500 and switch 1 to be pressed before LED3 comes on. Where you place these parentheses is vital. If you don't have the per if you just have this Who can tell what the compiler's doing? You really can't. So you really want to use those parentheses and group them in the way you want the system to work. In this case, I want 
S2 pressed and I want the pot setting to be greater than 500 and I want to be able to press the switch S1 at the same time. So under this condition it's going to be I can set uh, I press uh, S1 that part of the statement is going to be true. On the other part over here I can press S2 that will make this entire thing true or the pot can be set to greater than 500 and I don't touch S2 and the whole thing is still true and we'll cut on LED3. Let me run you through that again. The way this is set up from this parenthesis to this parenthesis is one statement in relation to the AND. This parenthesis to this parenthesis is the other statement. I press S1. This statement is going to be true. Now the compiler or the Arduino is going to look over here. Has S2 been pressed or is the pot value greater than 500? Because this is an OR because it can be the switch or the pot or both that makes this entire part of the statement true. True and true is true and it writes the LED, it turns the LED on. Let's look at this example again. In this part of the statement, I'm checking to see that S2, S1 is not pressed. And thus, as long as I don't press S1, this part of the statement is true. This is going to check for either S2 being pressed or the pot greater than 500. So all I need to do on this is either press S2, LED3 comes on. If I uh, have a pot value greater than 500, the LED3 will turn on. But if I press S1, this statement will immediately go false, and it doesn't matter what I do with S2 or pot. doesn't matter, because I've made this half of the AND statement false, and it will all be false regardless. And so this is just a brief look at playing with mo how to turn off LEDs with switches, pots, and whatever. But remember, when you build your Arduino projects, these are going to be sensors, and you have to decide what you want these sensors to do. And while we may be turning off and on some LEDs, they will be turning in later videos off and on motors and other devices. So I hope this was some help. Thanks for listening and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.